Looking at live pictures from Yokota Air Base, that's outside Tokyo, Japan, an American Air Base, President of the United States and his wife boarding Air Force One to fly to Seoul, South Korea for the next leg of his Asia tour. His daughter Ivanka broke off from the trip in Japan to return to the United States to make the case for the Republican tax bill. We're going to talk to her about that in just a minute on this show. But now on to breaking news. It was the deadliest church shooting in American history. Police still putting together all the evidence in the Sutherland Springs, Texas case. Devlin Patrick Kelly murdered 26 people, wounded at least another 20 at the First Baptist Church there. Good evening. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. For the latest findings in that investigation, we're joined by Fox correspondent Matt Finn, who is in Texas for us tonight. Matt? Tucker, we've learned the shooter himself had three gunshot wounds to his body, including one to his head, which the medical examiner says was self-inflicted. So the shooter killed himself after his deadly rampage here at this rural Texas church. We've also learned that the shooter recently purchased four guns. Authorities say all the sales were legal. There was no information in databases that would have flagged the shooter. And that aligns with two pieces of information we learned today. First, Academy Sporting Goods in San Antonio, Texas, released a statement saying it sold two guns to the shooter, one in 2016 and one in 2017, and that the shooter passed the national criminal background check and that that sporting goods store is now cooperating with law enforcement. Also, the U.S. Air Force did not submit the shooter's criminal records to the FBI as required by Pentagon law. This shooter was discharged from the Air Force for bad behavior for beating his wife and his stepson, intentionally cracking his stepson's skull. He was court-martialed and in prison. So had the Air Force turned that information over to the FBI, the shooter might not have been able to pass the background checks to purchase guns recently. The Air Force has launched a review into how the service handles the shooter's criminal records. And tonight at this hour, there are still 15 people in the hospital with wounds related to yesterday's shooting. Five of them are minors. Some are still in critical condition. Tucker, back to you. What a gruesome and awesome, awful story. Matt, thank you very much. Matt Finn from Texas. The investigators were able to find a lot about the Sutherland Springs shooter, Devin Patrick Kelly, almost immediately. Why were they able to put the pieces together in this case so fast while in Las Vegas, now a month old, we still know so little? For answers to that question and others, we turn now to NYPD officer and Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, who joins us live. Um, so, Dan, f first to the Texas shooting, um, apparently the Air Force did not, as you just heard Matt Finn report, enter this information about this man's court-martial and conviction and the year he spent in the brig into the criminal database that um, gun purchasers are run through. If they had put that information in there, would he have been prohibited from buying a gun? Yeah, he would have been prohibited from buying a gun, Tucker. And, and this is why uh, the radical left can't possibly win this gun control debate. I mean, Tucker, think about the argument they're making to us, right? The argument they're making to us is, oh, don't worry. Government can protect you. Listen, I love our military. God bless every man and woman that serves. But this was clearly a bureaucratic error that cost people their lives by officials in our government as they're making the very same argument, by the way, that we need new laws, despite the fact that the old laws didn't work because people in the government that are supposed to make new laws didn't cooperate with the laws we have now. And look at what we have on our hands. But yes, he would have been uh, stopped from buying a gun, and he wasn't, and look what happened. Right, and you see that with so many of our gun laws that are unenforced, including in the city of Chicago, where straw purchases are almost never prosecuted, even as they complain that they're a, a source of the problem, which they, which they certainly uh, are. Why do we know so much? and think heaven we do about this atrocity and still so little about the one that happened in Las Vegas more than a month ago. Well, this uh, this tragedy here, this this fits the models we have from my experience in the Secret Service of targeted violence, where you've seen indicators in the past. We're seeing, you know, you and I have talked about the Vegas shooting, but multiple uh, appearances here, and we said it doesn't make any sense because where are all the witnesses? Where are all the people coming out saying, you know, I saw something on Facebook that was strange. He said something at the local deli that was unusual. Where are they? The answer is nowhere. Nobody's found them yet or they're there and we just don't know about them. But in this case, we're seeing a litany of people come out and say, oh, there were odd Facebook posts. There's obviously a pattern of violent behavior. And as I've said repeatedly, when you look at models of targeted violence, Tucker, there's always a trail, always a trail. It's very rare, like in the Vegas shooting, where there's almost nothing there and it's a vacuum. 
So you don't think the investigation is different, but the, the, the crime is different. The perpetrator is different. Yeah, I mean, this guy seems to fit the pattern of people who go out there and a targeted violence, assassinations, school shootings, homicidal maniacs like this who decide to go into church. And we don't know the motive yet, but it appears there's some connection there. It yeah. appears that his desire to, you know, to take out revenge or whatever it may have been on a family member or an in-law, he just uses violence as a way to you know, show his power. And that's what he did. He took out 20 plus innocent people in his rampage there. But that fits the models we've seen in the past. Yes. What are the lessons for the rest of us of this? You know, Tucker, it pains me to say this, but churches are inherently vulnerable places. You know, you have the right to protect yourself. There are wolves out there. You know, there's a big conflict of visions. If I can steal a line from Thomas Sowell here. The left seems to believe that we can somehow legislate the evil out of people's hearts. You won't. Do not be a sheep. If you are a church, if you are a synagogue, you are in a uniquely vulnerable spot. It pains me to say that. But we live in a different time. You have an ingress, an exit and an entrance point in the back. Therefore, everybody comes out of the same spot. Right. Tucker, where's everybody's attention in church? Ahead. Where's the shooter going to come in? He's going to come in the back. You know, you also have the lack of cover or concealment. There's nowhere to hide. Why? Because people don't hide in church. They have to see what's going on in the altar. There's nowhere to go. It doesn't give me any joy in telling you that, but in 12 years as a Secret Service agent, if you were in a church or a house of worship, you have an obligation now to realize that we live in a different world. It's sad. These are black swan events. But the penalty for being involved in a black swan event like this is death. You, very, this has happened multiple right. times. You have to secure and harden up your location. It, it, I'm sorry I had to say that, but it is absolutely true in the times we live in. Dan Bongino, thanks a lot for that, as always. Yes, sir. Voters in Virginia.